This week on TGC News, Franklin Armory confuses us all, Remington fires a shot at Ruger, the new SIG P365, and new Big Boar from Wilson Combat, Bighorn Armory, and Phoenix Weaponry. Silencer Co. is offering the first ever suppressed muzzleloader since the inception of the NFA. The Maxim 50 is a 50 caliber muzzleloader with a permanently attached sound moderator, able to be purchased without going to a gun store and filling out a 4473. You can even get this thing shipped straight to your door in freedom-loving states. To find out more, check out the link in the video description or head over to silencerco.com. Welcome back everyone, my name is John Patton and you are watching TGC News. We are kicking this week off with three, yes, three new big bore cartridges and guns. We'll kick things off with one from Wilson Combat. The cartridge and gun are called the 458 Hammer. According to them, it's the most powerful AR carbine ever produced. It's a pretty bold claim, especially with the other new guns we're going to talk about, but Hey, let's give them a fair shot here. The hammer rifle is essentially a hybrid AR-10 kind of AR-15 thing. The BCG is shortened by three quarters of an inch, I believe from AR-10 dimensions, and the receiver is being called a hybrid. It actually uses AR-15 magazines, but it also uses an AR-10 bolt. This thing is really interesting. It kind of reminds me of the CMMG anvil that was chambered in 458 SOCOM. The cartridge itself, because it's based off the AR-10 bolt, can withstand pressures of up to 46,000 PSI, which is about 8,000 more than 450 Bushmaster, 11,000 more than 458 SOCOM, and 13,000 more than 50 Beowulf. They're claiming 3,000 foot-pounds of energy as well. The name seems to be appropriate given those stats. Now, being that this is a Wilson Combat, you can guarantee that it's super well-built, but also has a price tag to match. The starting price for the Tactical Hunter model is $2,905, while the Ultimate Hunter version is 100 bucks more. Next up in the Big Bull Roundup is a newcomer, a company called Phoenix Weaponry, and they've brought us a gun they call the Christine in 4570 Auto. Yes, you heard me correctly. 4570 Auto. This is a more simplistic approach from our last contender, as it's just a 4570 with a rim trimmed down. Same load data, same bullets, just a smaller rim that will work in a semi auto platform more reliably. The most interesting thing about this is that essentially you've taken one of the oldest rounds in American history and made it work in the most American gun out there an AR. Just Flat out wonderful, right? Now, this one is based on the standard AR-10 platform instead of the hybrid setup like the Wilson, but slings a 325 grain bullet down range at about 2,200 feet per second. Not quite as bone crushing as the 458 Hammer, but still very freaking cool. The barrel, like the Hammer, is an 18 inch and features an adjustable gas block for the variety of loads that you can cook up. The rifle from Phoenix Weaponry is about what you would expect but the price you may not expect. It's $4,800 to buy one of these things. It makes that Wilson look affordable. I never thought I would say 4,800, that's nearly five grand for that rifle. Whew. And last but not least, a new one from a company that has traditionally made one of the coolest lever action rifles on earth. Bighorn Armory, the makers of the Model 89 500 Magnum lever gun, has announced the 500 Automax. Now, this one really checks a lot of boxes for me. Essentially, they've taken the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum, the most powerful handgun cartridge in the world, and they've trimmed the rim, much like the 4570 Auto, and made it into the Automax. If you're hand loading, the main difference is going to be using a taper crimp instead of a roll crimp because losing the rim means you have to shift the headspace point to the neck of the cartridge. I assume it's the same for that 4570 as well, although they did not specify. This is again based on the AR-10, much like that was. But this one features a much fancier looking receiver than that 4570. The twist rate is significantly slower in the Automax at a 1 in 24 twist instead of a 1 in 14 in the 18 inch barrel. It also features an adjustable gas block, which is great to fine tune things, 
especially when you consider throwing a suppressor on one of these things. As far as the cartridge stacks up against the 458 hammer, Bighorn is claiming over 4,500 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle. That's 1,500 more than the hammer and 2,000 more than the venerable 50 Beowulf. Holy crap! boys and girls. One of them is actually set to end up in my hands in the near future because half-inch holes is always better than 458 diameter holes. And here's the best part. Instead of dumping nearly five grand into the 4570 or three grand into the 458 hammer, you only need to drop, yes, so only need to drop 2,000 bucks to get one. Far and away, the most affordable of this new generation of giants. What do you guys think of this type of rifle? They're certainly not for everyone, considering ammunition will likely cost dollars per round instead of cents per round, but the cool factor is off the charts. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And hey, Wilson Combat and Phoenix Weaponry, if you guys are out there listening, let's put these three guns head to head to head on a video right here on TGC. Next up this week is the new SIG P365. This thing has been all the rage recently, at least until the Franklin Armory Reformation got announced. Anyway, the 365's claim to fame is that it's a high capacity micro compact. It is a striker fire 9mm with a 3.1 inch barrel. It comes with one extended mag that holds 12 rounds, yes, 12 rounds, one flush mag that holds 10 rounds. It comes standard with night sights and features a proprietary rail instead of utilizing a Picatinny rail. It looks similar to the old HK USP rail system. I'm not a huge fan of proprietary rails, but Picatinny can be limiting in the smaller guns. They claim that it has a fantastic clean trigger feel, although based on the position of it, I would bet that the trigger travel is a lot longer than most want. We'll see you next week at SHOT Show. The high capacity claim comes from this gun stacking 10 rounds in the mag. This tiny little thing has 10 rounds in that flush mag. The thing that I find most interesting is that everyone is comparing this to the Glock 43. And while they're similar in physical dimensions, the Glock 26 is a 10 round 9 millimeter with a barrel that's only 0.4 inches longer than the 365. At the same time, I'm positive that the frame size on the 26 is a good bit bigger all around. You could also compare it to the Smith & Wesson Shield, which for a lot of folks is the gold standard in this category. Well, the 365 has that gun beat by about one ounce in weight and a few rounds in capacity. Very interesting here. I think there is a lot of merit to this new SIG, and I certainly think that competition in this market is awesome. Who wouldn't want the likes of Smith & Wesson and Glock to rethink their strategy and design a smaller gun with higher capacity than they already have. On a hilarious note, SIG has taken the bull by the horns and rated this gun for drop safety at 27 different positions, five times each with two different guns from a height of six feet. They've single-handedly taken one of the worst PR disasters they could have had and turned it into a new standard for drop tests smart. We'll be checking out the new 365 at SHOT Show, but in the meantime, I want to hear what you guys think. Will this be the new champion at its $600 price tag, or will the Shield and 43 shut down the Usurper by simply being cheaper? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And good God, is there really more new stuff this week, news? Remington has finally taken a swing at Ruger by releasing the new 700 PCR, or Precision Chassis Rifle. The Big Green designed their own chassis that takes AR stocks and grips, like the ones that come on the gun from Magpul. The handguard is dripping in the new-ish standard called Square Drop, which is keymod compatible and also kind of weird. Initially, the gun will be offered in three different calibers, 308, 260, and 65 Creedmoor, all of which will have a 24-inch barrel with 5R rifling, and what I can only presume, they haven't announced the actual thread pitch, I can only presume that it's 5 8 by 24 on the muzzle. Oh, and there's an oversized bolt knob. Yay! All pretty cool so far, right? They're also stating that they are confirming that every one of these that leaves the factory is sub-MOA. That is a standard right there that I think the entire industry needs to adopt. 
check it before it leaves the factory for accuracy. They check for function in every place out there. Why not check for great accuracy? Now, the thing you want to hear, how much is it? MSRP is $1,199, although I've already seen it listed for sale online for about $970. Ruger, look out. The feature set isn't quite the same, but this rifle has its sights on you. Not to be outdone when it comes to going into affordable markets, Leupold announced their new VX Freedom line of scopes. Having phased out the Redfield line of scopes and knowing that they were in search of the best way to offer even more affordable optics made here in the US, this seems to be the culmination of those two things. Initial offerings will include five different magnification ranges and be priced from about 235 bucks up to 390. Having spent time at Leupold's facilities last year and knowing how they make optics, this line has some promise to bring really solid value for that amount of money. And because you guys have asked about it a ton, I'll try to cover what we know about the new Franklin Armory Reformation. Just a few days ago, the folks at Franklin announced this. This looks like an SBR, right? Uh, well, they claim that there is no tax stamp required. It's got an 11 and a half inch barrel, a Magpul SL stock, and appears on the surface to be a normal AR-15 with one of their binary triggers installed. That again, sounds like an SBR. They have yet to release any information on what the gun is chambered in, but they have said that it is not, in fact, smoothbore. And from there, let your minds wander. They are doing a very good job keeping things quiet until SHOT Show. They claim to have a letter from the chief of the firearms technology division at ATF, but that has yet to be published, likely because it has information about the gun in it. All we have is some big question marks about what this is and how they got it through NFA laws. Let me know if you guys think Adam should do an episode of the legal brief on this gun once we know what exactly is going on here. The Spartan from LaserMax offers a different approach to weapon-mounted light and laser combos. Available with either a red or green laser, it also takes advantage of the most visible wavelength in the color spectrum and projects 120 lumens of mint green light with just a single AAA battery. Able to be mounted on virtually any pistol with a Picatinny rail, you can own the night by clicking the link in the video description to learn more. Our friendly fire questions this week, again, are from the TGC Nation group on Facebook. Seth Schumann asks, what my thoughts are on revolvers that are chambered in rounds designed for semi-autos? That's a great question. I think it's kind of funny because I love wheel gun cartridges in semi-autos, like the 357 Kunin and 44 Mag Deagle, but for whatever reason, a 9mm or 45 ACP wheel gun is only like mildly exciting for me to shoot. If I'm shooting a revolver, I want that kind of magnum cartridge experience, I guess. Hmm. Chris Mayo says, do you ever feel that the increasing number of new caliber ammo has gotten out of hand? Nope. Jeff Gibbons asks, are hammer fired pistols gone for good or will CZ bring them back? That's a tough question. I don't think they are gone for good. I personally really like the way hammer-fired guns feel, but striker-fired guns have pretty much taken over the consumer market. Maybe hammer-fired guns will go the way of the wheel gun and be more of a collector type thing in years to come. It's kind of tough to say, but uh, I like them. My question to you guys this week, do you think that 22 long rifle has any merit for self-defense. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And of course, if you want your question answered right here on the show, you can send that to me over on theguncollective.com. And that is it for this week's show, guys. If you enjoyed the episode, hit that like button and share it with your friends. That is a massive help for us. If you didn't, let me know why down in the comments below, like always. And if you haven't yet, please get subscribed. You won't want to miss a single week of the show. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. The shirts worn in today's video on the Gun Collective have been provided by Patriot Patch. Closed captions have also been brought to you by Patriot Patch Company. Be sure to click the link in the video description to check out all of their great products, including their cleaning mats.